corporate America is slashing DEI workers amid backlash to diversity programs. No, that, that's just the excuse. Th this is the excuse they needed. They were waiting for someone else to do it first. And now, now they have their, their reason. Now they have their excuse. The money has run out. And the charity jobs are, of course, going to be the first ones to get cut. So DI officers say uh, they've faced cuts in the years since uh, George Kirby's overdose. Years after the overdose of George Kirby shined a spotlight on societal inequities, diversity professionals say some companies are turning their backs on the regress that's been made to address them. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we made so much progress, right? We were so close to being in a like a post-racial society. And then the race hustlers were like, but but if we can't play the victim, how are we going to get money? Yeah, we, we're going to have to fix this. Now, Madison Butler is one of the many diversity, equity, and inclusion professionals that companies previously bought on their payroll to ensure the business is, uh, well, uh, as a charity, let's just say. In recent months, Butler said she found it increasingly hard to find work, and she's not alone. Oh, no. Race hustlers and scammers can't find work? How will society run without them? Now, DI positions have been disproportionately hit by layoffs across industries, but particularly at tech companies, which have faced financial challenges as sales slowed down from blistering pace attained during the pandemic. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's not. I mean, I, I guess if you just look at the raw data, they have been disproportionately affected. But when you look at the logic behind it, of course, these would be the jobs that are affected. Look, these are the charity jobs I keep talking about. These aren't real jobs. They don't make the company money. These are charity jobs for virtue signaling. They cost the company money. While the company has boatloads of money coming in, they can afford to throw money away on positions like this. When it's time to tighten the belt, though, Obviously, the jobs that, that are, aren't bringing in money and are costing money are going to be the first to go. That's why they're, quote unquote, disproportionately affected. And when Butler reached out to die professionals who plan to hire her for consulting, she said companies have told her, uh, oh, this person is no longer with the company. Oh, this person has been laid off. Oh, this person no longer works here effective last month. <laughs> yeah, companies are like, we don't have the money to waste on $3,000 ahead diversity seminars anymore. Like, no, thank you. We, uh, we actually need to spend our money paying productive employees. Oh, and it, it doesn't help that the, the Supreme Court also declared uh, the systemic racism is illegal. So we can't really do this anymore. All right, Melody, uh, who is using only her first name for privacy reasons, is also a die professional. It said she was laid off with others on her die team within just a few months of their hiring. Oh, man. Imagine being one of those poor suckers that, that got a useless college degree in die right as it's collapsing. Man, there's going to be a lot of crying about that. It's difficult uh, to be somewhere for a brief period of time and feel like you uh, didn't even have the time to make the impact you wanted to make. Oh, I, I wasn't even there long enough to destroy the company. Now, the workplace is so full of human beings and we're not robots yet. And we definitely need people at work who can help us feel like we belong there. <laughs> That's why you got fired. Yeah, you, you're only concerned. No, no th th this is just like that that woman we saw the video of uh, at, at one, one of those uh, failed colleges you know, say, saying that that was her home, basically. Like, no, 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 it's not. It's a nationwide call to action. Okay, how are you going to spin this? So George Kirby, a black man, wa was uh, overdosed in uh, current year minus three. Uh, his uh, death prompted nationwide uh, riots in which violent rioters demanded individuals and organizations alike take action in addressing uh, uh, perceived societal inequities and uh, un under the threat of getting their businesses burned down if they didn't. Now, to do this, some companies sought the expertise of die professionals like Butler and Melody. Yeah, th this was them basically saying, oh, look, look, we're on your side. Don't burn our building down. We certainly saw everyone uh, coming out of the woodwork wanting to hire a lot of them, hiring uh, inaugural die folks. And uh, you had to wonder, like, are they actually ready for this or is this a trend we're seeing? No, it, it's not even a trend. It's a fad. 
The, the, the difference, by the way, is trends last way longer than fads. Like fads are like are for like one season and they're done. Trends are generally a couple of years. So th this was never even a trend. This was just a fad. This was a knee-jerk reaction to a bunch of violent rioting. My d die initiatives are often intended to address uh, workplace culture and conditions. Yeah, but by making them horrible, such as inaccessibility in the workplace for disabled people, poor attention rates for workers of color and other inequalities faced by marginalized groups. Yeah. And in the process, their ability to retain white employees go just plummets. But they don't care about that. From September current year minus four to September current year minus three, job postings for diversity, inclusion, and belonging positions on hiring website indeed rose 56.3%. Yeah, LinkedIn study found that chief diversity inclusion officer positions grew 168.9% from current year minus four to current year minus one. And now the money has ran out and the charity positions are being trimmed. The rapid organizational movement towards addressing inequalities was initially exciting for die professionals, but in just a couple of years, that excitement waned as, rap as growth rapidly fell apart. <laughs> yeah, now, now we're going to have a lot of useless people just dumped on the market. And, and see, that, that's probably why, uh, wait, wait, which, which one of those women was the smart one? Let me, yeah, Melody, yeah. Melody was the smart one. She, she only gave her first name. So she might be able to, to, to kind of slink away under the cover of darkness and pretend she never had anything to do with this. Cause, cause really anyone that's ever been involved in this scam, I would say should be blacklisted. Like the, the these people are HR ticking time bombs. They're not interested in doing work. They're only interested in how they can use your company for activism. You do not want to hire these people. If you are a serious business that wants to make money, these are the last people you want to hire. Right, the honeymoon is over. Cecil Howard, the die consultant, former chief diversity officer at the University of South Florida, told ABC News. Right after uh, George Kirby's overdose, everyone who didn't have a die officer quickly created one. Yeah. To, to appease the violent mob. A few years later, they start realizing we checked the box and things are a little quieter now. No, it's more like we checked the box and now the money's running out. We can't afford to keep, you know, to, to, to keep paying people that don't do a productive work. Now, die begins to disappear. Why are you phrasing it like it's a bad thing? Starting in late current year, minus three months after the overdose of uh, Kirby set off, uh, Violent riots. A host of companies escalated cuts of die professionals. A survey of more than 600 companies for, uh, from data firm Revelio Labs found. Last year, the layoffs accelerated significantly. Yeah, because the money ran out. Your job was only there for charity and virtue signaling. Obviously, that's the first thing that's going to get cut. And one in three die professionals lost their role over a one year period ending in December. Why isn't it three in three? If it was three and three, we might see some progress. Now, over that period, the study added non-die workers experienced a relatively lower attrition rate of 21%. Yeah, because uh, other than trust and safety and other useless positions like that, a lot of these other workers actually do productive work. The job losses owe to several trends, a sluggish economy that prompted the co uh, cost cuts. Hey, the irony is... You guys got the president you voted for, and now you're paying for it. Congratulations. When Orange Man was in the White House, the economy was doing great. You guys all, the companies were so flush with money, you could afford to waste it on this garbage. Now you got your guy in, and it all falls apart. You did it to yourselves, man. A softening of the scrutiny that held corporations to account over racial justice and the rising conservative backlash against die. Some die professionals told ABC News. Well, yes, yes, this is it. So finally, conservatives took their balls back out of their wife's purse and, and, and put them on and, and realized, like, if we just keep bending over and taking it, if we keep being the silent majority, of course, they're always going to the, the, give the, the squeaky wheel the grease. It's time we became the squeaky wheel, and it's been super effective. In current year minus three, a lot of organizations reacted to the market, reacted to social events taking place without having a clear understanding of what die is and how it uh, should be enabled in business. 
No, everyone knows what it is now. That's why they're ditching it. When things get rough, uh, these are the areas that go. Yeah. The non-productive ones, yes. Speaking to laid-off die professionals, how noticed job loss is constantly among individuals who criticize the employer's diversity-related policies or offered ambitious ideas for reform. Hey, you, you know what would change the world if you just bankrupted your company doing these this social work? Wait, why am I being laid off? I don't get it. This must be racism and sexism. I'm going to sue. Now, these separations weren't coming from organizations that were really serious about enhancing their culture. Well, you, you mean destroying their culture, yeah. Uh, he said, describing a chilling effect for die professionals. We don't need you to be a voice. We need you to be a face. Yeah, that's this is the moment where the diversity hires realize that they weren't hired on merit. Like they, they weren't hired to change the culture. This is when they finally realize that they've always just been a token. They hired you to check a box. That's it. And sadly, a, a lot of them, they, they thought way too highly of themselves. They, they thought they got hired on merit. They're learning the hard way. That's not the case now. At the same time, conservative elected officials as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Texas Governor Greg Abbott began to target die initiatives. Well, wh why, why is this a problem? Well, when you have far left states like California and New York basically mandating these initiatives, it makes sense that their political enemies would do the opposite. Yeah, it, it, it sucks when the, the when the right isn't just bending over and taking it anymore, doesn't it? Now you actually have to choose. You can't fence it anymore. You have to, or you can't pick the safe side anymore. You have to choose now. Do you want money or do you want virtue signaling? Which one? You know, DeSantis last month signed a law, uh, signed into law a bill that prohibits state or federal spending on die programs at public universities in Florida. It should be in everything. The acronym DeSantis said should be reinterpreted as discrimination, exclusion, and indoctrination. He's absolutely right about that. that that's what it is. In February, Abbott's office ordered state agencies to stop using uh, discrimination, exclusion, and indoctrination programs in hiring, calling them illegal. Good. And things have only gotten better since. So Abbott's chief of staff, uh, Gardner Pate, uh, claimed these programs proactively encourage discrimination in the workplace and do the opposite of what they claim to do. Again, 100% truth. This, this is how the far left always operates. They, they, they do the most evil stuff, but they apply the most cutesy names to it. So, so then if you oppose them, like, what do you have against saving abused children? Like, but you're not saving abused children, though. You're trafficking them. You're just calling it saving abused children. But that's the opposite of what you're actually doing. But you no, know, but since they have the media on their side, all the media has to do is put the put their enemies on blast. All these guys are against saving abused children. And the sheep fall for it. And in June, Abbott signed a ban on diversity offices at state-funded higher indoctrination institutions. Yeah. And, and now the Supreme Court has basically ruled them uh, unconstitutional anyway. Uh, in a statement, a spokesperson from Abbott's office told ABC News that the issue is not diversity. The issue is uh, that uh, equity is not equality and die practices conflate the two. Yeah, I mean, equity is discrimination. The equity is, oh, we didn't achieve equal outcomes, so we have to discriminate against uh, certain groups to get it. Yeah, equality is equality of opportunity. Equity is equality of outcome. The statement continued, some universities and woke professors have been using die to advance political agendas and exclude conservative viewpoints on college campuses. And that's why college campuses have been declining massively. Look at Evergreen. They're still one of my favorite whipping boys. Ever since parents and students figured out it's just an activist hellhole, their attendance has plummeted. Uh, these efforts uh, adversely affect our students, limit exposure to diverse thoughts, and destroy our indoctrination system. Yeah, Th this system shits out useless people like these diversity and inclusion executives. That now when they're getting fired, they, they what are they going to do? How are they going to contribute to society? M maybe starting an OnlyFans account? That's like about the only option they got. They didn't learn any useful skills.
Yeah, DeSantis' office did not respond to ABC's news request for comment. Why would they? So Linder accused elected officials like Abbott and DeSantis of weaponizing die for political purposes, conservative uh, political attacks, uh, one of the driving forces behind cuts in the field. So it's not funny now that the other side's doing it too, right? The left has been weaponizing them for their political purposes for decades now, and they were fine with it because they agreed with it. Now that the right is doing the same thing, it's suddenly wrong. Yeah, cry me a river. I don't care. So Butler and Melody believe that anti-die policies intend to, uh, to, to actually go back to progress, you know, turn back the regress we've been. Yeah, so so let, let, me just, let me just put it this way. These guys, their idea of progress is, is driving us towards a cliff. In order to actually achieve progress, we actually have to turn around and go back to the proper road so we could go around the cliff. They don't like that, though. No, people fear losing power. Wow. Self-awareness? Uh, have you considered getting it? Like This is the same thing like when, when these same people say to those with privilege, losing that privilege seems like oppression. Same situation here. These people fear losing their power. Yeah, so much of this work has to be centered around deconstructing things like white supremacy, deconstructing status quo. Those status quo, white supremacy, protect people in positions of power. Say the people in the positions of power in these protected groups that are now afraid of losing those positions, yes? Isn't that what's going on here? They have no self-awareness. They are the ones that fear losing their power. Without these die policies, professionals, fear organizations may fall back to patterns that create things customers actually want or work cultures that drive away bloat and useless employees. Wow, that would suck, right? So if we don't have employees that understand people of different cultures, yeah, yeah, our company will never make money if we don't have employees that understand cultures that actively hate the product that, that, that we make and, and want to destroy it. Man, a company is going to find themselves losing good employees to discriminatory practices. Oh, you Once again, zero self-awareness. They've chased away good employees because of discriminatory practices with DEI. <laughs> they have, dude, it's, it's pathetic. Zero self-awareness. All they do is project. So she continued, it's going to be an uphill battle for retention. No, maybe for you to retain your power, but companies don't want to retain these wastes of oxygen. Why would a company want to retain HR ticking time bombs? Employee morale is going to go down. And not only, only diversity hire charity job employee morale is going to go down. You're the only ones. Because these employees feel like uh, targets, uh, like, like, like they have targets on their back. Yeah, because you're not making money. You're costing money. You're costing your employer money. So yes, you do have a target on your back. Now, companies choosing to slash die programs could face difficulty hiring uh, hiring diversity hires that destroy their companies anyway. It's not just about being regressive as an organization. Start uh, looking at the bottom line. Yeah. So before you started uh, the, the, down this diversity path, you were successful. Now that you've gone down this diversity path, you're bleeding money. You're 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 losing customers. You're losing your top talent. Clearly, the, the correct act, course of action, looking at the bottom line, is to double down on failure. That, that's what we got to do. Let's, let's double down. Oh, but surely if we just do this for another decade, it'll eventually profit, right? K keep believing that. See where that gets you. See what happens. Now, some states that have banned workplace affirmative action, a, a, um, racist, a racism initiative that allows employers to, well, implement systemic racism, uh, saw that such bans negatively impacted diversity in the workplace. Okay, they, it negatively impacted diversity, but how did it impact profitability? Because this, these guys, they, they can't admit that diversity on its own doesn't mean anything. In fact, the way it's being implemented now, it's actively harmful. 
They say diversity is there is our strength. If you provide evidence otherwise, they they have to plug their ears and go la 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 because th this is the core tenet of their ideology. It's like th this is this is to them what uh, oh women can do anything a man can do is to feminism because n now that men are able to participate and compete against women, feminists can't say anything. Like feminists, all they can do is just cope and seethe in the corner because they they can't they can't admit that women can't compete with men. Because <laughs> that 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 just destroys the, the central pillar of their ideology. It, it's the same thing here. If these guys have to admit that, that their form of diversity actually isn't a strength. It's actually a massive liability. Dude, that would be the end of them. You know, the study analyzed the workforces of four state governments following the ban and found these uh, states saw significant declines in the number of black women's, Latino men, and Asian women's working there. Okay, but how, is per how did that affect performance, though? We're never going to get those numbers, right? We're never going to get the performance numbers because they don't, they don't want to admit it got better. Meanwhile, the number of white men increased. Yeah. Now, now I know for sure performance got better. So diversity is also proven to be good for business, according to several hacks that indicate companies that are more diverse are more innovative and turn in turn more profitable. Okay. So why is it that all these companies that went all in on diversity are now backing out? Is it is it because they're like they're so profitable now? Like they they just don't know what to do with all that money. Oh, yeah, sure. The companies that fail to diversify could fall behind. Th th that's why the West is actively trying to cripple Japan because Japan is outperforming them in every way when it comes to entertainment. So, of course, the only way they can compete is to get them to diversify themselves too, right? Yeah, you know, especially in the tech industry where surging development of AI has heightened the importance of innovation. <laughs> Oh my God, AI, it could be the final nail in the coffin of this diversity bullshit. Yeah, now it's, if, if a single white man with an AI can do what it takes, what one of these entire diverse companies can do, it's game over. That That's it. You're done, man. You were seeing more candidates who wanted to join companies that align with their values. It's difficult for companies to authentically say die is a priority when they're cutting. It's almost as if they don't want people whose values are, are, are aligned with that. Because they're, they're nothing but a liability. Companies are finally starting to wake up, huh? Yeah, too bad most of them already chased away their, their audiences, though. And once you chase away an audience, they're never coming back. So it's too late, but it, it's still funny what, watching the uh, the beast eat its own tail, though. They're going to start seeing results on the marketplace years to come, she added. Yeah, we're seeing the results of your diversity initiatives in the marketplace right now. And companies are realizing, like, yeah, we made a mistake. We, we got to turn around. <laughs> this diversity crowd... Are, they're basically the people telling the, the captain of the Titanic, ah, oh, don't worry about that iceberg. We, we, we're, we're diverse. We're equipped to handle it. We're, we're immune to icebergs. J just keep going. And anyone who listens to them, honestly, you deserve to fail. Especially now. Now that the smart companies are starting to walk this woke garbage back, Anyone who insists on doubling down on it deserves the failure they're heading towards. I have no sympathy for them. I, I only hope that when, when they collapse, they don't take any innocence down with them. Like that, that's that that's it. Like the, the people, like these people that keep doubling down on wokeness, they deserve it. The only sad thing is they're they're taking innocence with them. Like th those are the only ones I feel sorry for. But otherwise, no, th this is good news. We might finally see some improvement. I, I can't wait.
I can't wait to see game companies in particular giving us sexy women again in an attempt to win back the customers they chased away. It's going to be so good. I look forward to all the laid off game journalists coping and seething and reading about it on Twitter to their three followers because no one actually followed them for them. They followed them for the brand they worked at. And we're in for some fun times, man. I can't wait. And if we can lead that pointing and laughing, I will happily contribute.